Next up is no stranger to anybody, I think, on the webinar, and that is our Head of Client Services, Ashraf Hussain. So, Ashraf, thank you so much for being here this morning. Great to have you in you. person. <laughs> I haven't seen you much in the last year and a half, um, but thanks for coming into to the studio here. So, Ashraf, I've asked for the next 15 minutes to really update everybody on the webinar on Ned Group's hard work that we've done in terms of our digitalization, our journey, as his topic is headed here, journey to a paperless world. And I've also asked him just to touch on some of the areas that they're focusing on as client services, some of the issues that they've had, their priorities going forward, but largely just to talk about our whole digitalization and a paperless world. So Ashraf, we're really ex happy to have you here, look forward to what you've got to say and handing the floor for the next 15 minutes or so over to you. That's great, thanks Trevor. And it's great to see you again. I haven't <laughs> seen you in a while too. <laughs> it's always good to be in face, with, face to face with humans for a change right. instead of a screen. So I really appreciate it. Um, thank you. So yeah, um, as Trevor has indicated, I'm gonna be talking a little bit around our journey to move from paper to, I guess, a digital way of, of engaging with Negrib Investments. So I'll cover a few items on here specifically. Uh, I know I've been kept to quite a brief amount of time, which is about 15 minutes, so I'm gonna try and be as, as speedy as possible, but cover the, the salient points. Uh, so let me just cover through on our digital journey, first of all. Um, why did we go through it and why have we digitized? I mean, there's a number of different reasons why we, we went on this, this road. I mean, I think for one thing that uh, you'll see that most companies have gone, and I guess the world has gone, is that it, it's changing the way we operate. And I think this whole thing around being future fit has become a big driver of how we need to, as a, as a business change, at the same time to help you as advisors and your business to become future fit as well. So technology has changed a lot of our operating models in how we, we work and how we do things. And, and it's forced us to rethink like, is that exactly what we want to do? And, and if a, a machine can do it or technology or software can do it, it frees up, uh, up space for us to do other things. And I guess to some extent, you know, it's led, led us to look at better opportunities for our business and I guess for you as a financial planner business as well to improve your performance and growth prospects. Um, what technology has also done is made it more efficient um, and through automating certain processes. And so what it actually has said is that those things that used to take a lot of time and used to be part of your proposition has now shifted. And it's made you think of what is differentiating my offering from the rest. So whether that is through you know, deepening your engagement with your clients, really understanding their needs, around creating some form of uh, innovation around how you offer certain, certain services and being creative in what you're actually taking out to the market. From the other side of digitization as well, it's, like it's really made the client experience a lot better. I mean, if you think about the amount of times you had to fill out forms, you had to print it out, you had to scan it in, and then the scanner doesn't work. I mean, those were really, really painful parts of how you had to do work. I mean, what this has allowed you is to really make it very simple and easy for you and at times it makes it on demand. So you don't have to wait for the printer to be online or you didn't have to wait for paper to be in there. You can do things automatically. And with this digital way of engaging, things used to be a lot seamless, immediate, and it used to be error free. And, and the last thing around it is around accessibility. So it's really been allow you to access information now on various different platforms and portals. So. I will talk a little bit about that, that later on when we talk to um, where our digital journey has gone. And the last part of it is really around cost saving. It really has reduced the amount of time you take to do certain things. Um, paper obviously is a key thing now with also looking at how we being, become more sustainable and the opportunity cost. You know, we now don't have to spend much time filling out paper. We spend more time now actually looking at how can we add value to our clients or how can we add value to grow our business? For example, soliciting new clients. So that's one of the, th those are the three key reasons why digitization has become so pervasive and it's something that um, not only negative investments has focused on, but I think as financial planning businesses, there's been a drive towards that. So if you look at our digital journey so far, I mean, we've done a lot of things within negative investments. And I think it all started in 2015 where we introduced our first online transacting site. And I think at that point, you know, it wasn't the greatest um, look and feel, but definitely had really, really good functionality. Um, and we went and went out to the market with that. 
In 2017, we introduced, I guess, what we would say at that point was probably a first for the investment industry. We had our first chatbot, you know, a little digitally enabled virtual assistant. And they would help deal with standard requests for financial planners and for clients. So things that you would get on the web or you'd phone in for, this little, little bot would actually help you quite quickly and get the information that you want. A little bit further down the line in 2018, we introduced also a very, very unique uh, solution, which was our digital onboarding solution. And effectively, that allowed you to get a new client on board with Negrim Investments with absolutely no paper, absolutely nothing, no signing, no scanning of, of completed forms. The client never had to sign, and it was really, really a seamless and frictionless experience. Uh, in 2018, at the same time, we also launched a, a robo-advisor. It's something that still sits on our website. And again, those are services which are provided for clients who may not have huge amounts of assets or they really want to try and get advice, but they don't want to sit with a person. So there's this digital advisor that helps you and guide you in terms of trying to meet some investment goals. In 2019, we went through a refresher of the website, and you'll see that we've done a lot of nice work on the website right now. The way it's looked, the, the UX is very really clean. It's also combined the international website to some point. And, it, and, and also, what we've also got is some very amazing tools, of which one I'll just quickly show you a little bit later on. Uh, in 2019, at the same time, we've introduced some very key functionality, which I would call is, is around bank account changes. And really what it does is it allows you as an advisor or the client to change their bank account details very securely online. And so there's a lot of security around it and the integrity of information is quite high. And being part of the bank has allowed us to make sure that we are quite secure when we do that. And then last but not least, it's something that we've we also spent quite a bit of time being part of the bank is we integrate in there. And so what this has allowed us is for clients who have got a net bank account to be able to view the investments on the money app or the money web, so the net bank digital properties. So we start sharing information and it becomes accessible across multiple platforms. So this is just very quickly the client onboarding solution, um, and you'll see it's it's really really amazing. You have to you have to use it. Um, it really allows for like seamless completion of a client onboarding uh, onto Negrim Investments uh, products, and particularly unit trust and tax free savings. Um, the FICA process is very seamless. We do a lot of our checks in the background around risk rating, which is a requirement that the regulator has put in place, but everything happens real time, which means that you literally follow the prompts and the process and every, all the checks happens in the background. And the only last thing you need to do is, is to sign it. And that signature is done by the client using ID as an authentication method, but there is no paper or wet signature required. So effectively, it's a little tick that the client accepts and that stands up in a court of law as an official signature. Um, and what we've also enhanced is the payment mechanisms. Again, we've so we put the EFT, the proof of payment is an option besides once of debits. Again, very seamless. So I'm not going to go through a lot of that at this point. I have to try it. You have to be in it to win it, as they say. Um, one of the other tools I think I mentioned earlier on was around the big picture. And it's an app that sits on our website. And really, it's a really great tool with a lot of history and information in there, but probably about a thousand months of market history in there. And what this tool is going to help you as, as a financial advisor is for your clients to understand the trade-off of some of their decisions. So it's a what-if scenario. If you have take a too much of a high drawdown percentage, what will that, how will that impact your longevity of your pension? Uh, if you are going to work longer, how much more income will that be able to generate you? Uh, or, you know, if you're too conservative, you know, or staying in cash, what does that do to your overall ability to meet your objectives? A really, really great solution and uh, a tool, and please do go and use it. Just to give it a sense of how our transition of, of transacting has happened, and I guess when Trevor said moving uh, to pay away from a paper or paperless environment, this graph, all it shows is just a, ref a view of how transacting has changed from the time we've launched our online facilities. And I think the key thing to note here is that from about 2016, 2017, you know, when we had about a quarter of everything being done um, online, which is the little green bar, 
the green bar over the years has gone significantly bigger. And as of 2021, which is about July, about three out of four every instructions that are coming through are done online. So really great adoption, which means that you guys are loving it, it's been used, and it's an absolutely uh, easy way of, of dealing with net group investment. So hoping to see that this love for the digital properties continues, and that by the end of the year, we hopefully reach 80% or more. But again, you know, we take your feedback and that's what we use to constantly improve the solution so that you enjoy using those platforms. Just, uh, just going back to a point that Trevor made earlier on, there were some issues experienced early in this year, and so I thought I'll just give you a little bit of update on what those issues were and just reiterate uh, and recap on them, and then also give you an update as to what we've done so far um, since then. So if you look at the first item was really around the system stability and effectiveness, and I think one of the big things that influenced a lot of that was the fact that the site was slow and that the fact was a little bit, the site was a bit unstable, but also some of the functionality wasn't really um, working as intended. So one of the, the, the features that we launched was what we call the client approval functionality, which is using the NetBank infrastructure called Approve It. Uh, we've disabled that since it started creating a lot of friction and a lot of challenges with, with trying to put transactions, transactions through. And so we've put that off and we've now developed a new solution, which is in progress. So we're getting there and hopefully in early October, we should be able to present that as another option. And the website speed, as I said, was quite challenging. And so we're constantly reviewing that and looking at how we can make improvements and it remains a top priority. So there are things that we are working on and it's something that we're definitely focusing on. The long call waiting times and the email response times, again, was a factor of the system's instability. So as the system became unstable, you know, you ended up calling us and ended up emailing us and it became like a, a bit of a snowball effect. Uh, what we have done is we've started rejigging some of the chairs around and we've ad added some additional capacity to the, the financial planners teams. So we seconded them from other servicing teams and we've managed to able to get them in. We've also managed to be able to secure what we call an evergreen vacancy status. And what that means is that we will always be advertising and recruiting consultants. So even though we might have a full batch of consultants and we're fully capacitated, we'll always be looking for more and we'll keep them in the ground and eventually we will actually over-resource because we'll always need them. Um, and then we've put some new tools in place to make sure the new, new email management tool is one of them to make sure that any things that are taking too long to resolve, there's an escalation and it gets attention very, very quickly. There were some staff competency gaps that was also identified. Um, some technical gaps was identified and also some soft skills. So for both those, there's specific training programs that are in place. Um, the ones are internal, which is the technical ones, and the soft skills one, we've commissioned an external company to actually run that for us. So that's hoping to start off in the next month or two. And again, that's going to help um, improve the engagement levels of the team. And then the last item around here was just around change management. I think we didn't spend enough time engaging and landing the change while making people aware and communicating it at the same time, making sure there was enough training around it. So a new process is going to be kicked in very shortly uh, where we're going to make sure that we communicate well um, and we create enough awareness and enough opportunity for this to, to land before the change actually happens. And as always, testing is going to be very key with our financial planners to make sure that the functionality works for them and any feedback that is taken in will be used to improve the solution and ultimately training as well. So just looking at some of the other planned initiatives besides what we have done to address some of the issues um, is really around, sorry, around the, the service enhancement initiatives that I'll focus on. So we've invested quite a bit around um, an email solution that, we try, that we've trialed now recently, but that is actually the base and foundation for other tools that we will be deploying pretty soon in, and later on this year. So something like a co-browsing solution, which will help if you are experiencing problems on the, on the website, allows us to actually take over and show you and help you navigate through somebody on the other side to navigate and show you where the, 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 the different solutions are on the website and also where you are troubleshooting to find a solution for that. Web chat has also been one of those items that we will try and build. So instead of 
you know, trying to phone somebody or maybe needing somebody to actually pass on through the co-browsing solution, you could chat and speak to a consultant right there and then as well. Some of the challenges we've, we've seen in the last few months also is that we have clients that are started an, an instruction, but they get stuck. And what it end up, ends up happening is that a piece of paper will have to be filled in because we can't find the instruction on the system. And so we're working on what I call an agent-assisted fulfillment solution. So that is basically allowing the consultant to look at where you've last transacted and if it's stuck in the system that we actually digitally push it through as opposed to having to send you a piece of paper. And then last but not least, to make sure that we always improve our solution, it is about trying to get client feedback. So there's an integrated client feedback solution that is coming through pretty shortly. Um, and, and just in terms of the enhanced transacting features, there's a few of them that are coming down the line. Again, data remains key to make sure that the data is there and that it works so that the solution works on that. We're stabilizing some of our existing solutions, so we're making sure that that's working properly. Um, our client approval solution I mentioned earlier on is due to come out end of October. Again, that is a way of making sure that your client is consented to that actual instruction. And then a few other key transacting features, which is around being able to onboard something like a corporate or a trust is one of the things you're working on and the living annuity income revision process, again, to put it on the website as opposed to doing it very manually. And then last but not least is just around, we have secured additional resourcing. We are trying to improve um, the kind of skills that we have. And again, the soft skills, how we engage with you. And then to some extent, also the level of technical skills, particularly in those product that are very much regulated. So we're getting a specialist in there to help improve and beef up the, the capacity and the knowledge in the team. And then there are some process reviews which are being conducted. Um, one was, I guess, the SARS file submission. And I know there was quite a bit of a noise early in the year and particularly close to, to SARS um, tax season. And we're doing a quick look and review of that process. And then Unfortunately, you know, clients do die, but there's a deceased estate process which wasn't the greatest and it caused a little bit of discomfort. So we're looking at that process again. So that kind of is in a nutshell, the update around our, our road to digital. Again, a lot of work being done in the digital space. And, and yeah, there's a lot of improvements that are coming down the line. So I'm hoping it's gonna pan off for, for clients at the end of the day. That's me, thank you. <laughs>